Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Hey, in this one, I'm uh, going to make it short and sweet as I can. I just want to give you guys some tips about your visa and your passport. Sometimes people have questions. Usually if you're an experienced traveler, uh, you, you probably heard all this before, you probably know it. Uh, but there's a lot of people who maybe this is their first trip overseas or their first trip to Cambodia and might not be aware of some of these things. So I thought I'd uh, give you guys this information to pass on and let me know if there's anything I missed uh, after this video in the comments. If you have any other uh, tips as far as that goes. For other people who might not be as experienced it's always helpful and just a reminder if you want to help support the channel and help us out we really really appreciate it our goal this month is to get $300 in donations and I think we can get there and I got something coming next month uh, as soon as this month is over, everybody who donates at least $5 or more this month is going to get something that I can't even talk about right now, but it's going to be coming next month, not only to you guys, uh, but also if you're a Patreon of my Horror Reach channel, uh, you got a surprise coming there as well. So just something to tease you a little bit, but if you want to do that and you want to help support the channel, uh, just... There are links down below for PayPal, Kopi.com, and uh, we appreciate it. We love our supporters. You help make good things happen, and we love you. All right, so the first thing I want to tell you is that when you, if you're coming to Cambodia and you're getting a visa on arrival, uh, when you go up to the immigration counter, you want to have cash in hand. You want to have USD in crisp, clean, unmarred, as perfect as possible condition as you can get it. Uh, the tourist visa the, uh, will be uh, $30. And the E-type visa, the long-term stay visa option, will be $35. And you want to have that ready in cash uh, and in exact change. Now it's very possible they might have change. They might be able to give you back change if you don't have it exactly, but they might not. And that will cause an unnecessary delay if they, if they happen not to have uh, change available. So be sure you have your USD and crisp, clean, unmarred bills and in the exact amount. That way you don't hold anybody up in line and you can get through without having an extra hassle of having to figure out now how you're supposed to get change if they don't, if they don't have any. And again, that's $30 for a tourist visa, $35 for an E-type visa. Now, once you're in the country, there are going to be, depending on your reason for being here and your length of stay, there could be several instances where you are going to need your passport to verify who you are and your status in the country. <clears throat> These might include getting an apartment so they can enter you into their foreign presence in Cambodia system. We'll need to see your passport for that. <clears throat> uh, it could be renting a, a motorbike. <clears throat> You'll need your passport and visa for that as well. <clears throat> Opening a bank account, you'll need your passport and visa for that. If those are things you're going to do. And of course, when it comes time to renew your visa or get your first visa extension, you'll need your passport for that. But out of all those situations, under no circumstances except for one of those, should you ever give them your 
physical passport to hang on to. Never ever do that. Except when you're getting your visa extension or your renewal. Of course, then they need your passport because the travel agency will be sending it to Phnom Penh. They send them in batches. And then when it comes back after it's stamped and you get your new visa and everything or your visa extension, uh, they'll call you and you go pick it up. But that is the only time you should ever give your physical passport to somebody to hang on to for any length of time unless they're just taking it to check it out and then handing it right back. I know there's <coughs> occasionally uh, some iffy motorcycle rental places that will insist that you need to give them your physical passport because you're renting the motorbike and when you bring it back they'll give you back your passport but that don't just don't do that because there are many many more places who will not require that all right uh, chances are and this has happened a lot when you do get when you do bring the motorbike back they're going to find little things that they say weren't there before little scratches maybe a ding or <coughs> Maybe they're going to say, uh, it, it sounds a little funny, I think you did something to the bike. And then they're going to demand that you pay them or else you're not going to get your passport back. <laughs> so uh, you don't want to be caught up in a situation like that. Before you even rent a motorbike, you, you and the owner should check it out, take pictures of everything that's wrong with it, every little ding, every little scratch, just to be on the safe side. So when you bring it back in the same condition, you can say, hey, that was there before, that was there before, etc. But under no circumstances should you ever just hand somebody your physical passport and say, keep it and I'll come back and get it in a few days or <laughs> whatever. Uh, that's, that is usually not going to end well for you. Now also, when it comes time for your visa your first visa extension or your renewals you want to give yourself enough time so it gets to Phnom Penh in time to get stamped before your other visa expires it doesn't matter when it comes back to you it does matter when it gets to Phnom Penh and they stamp it if it doesn't get there in time let's say it gets to Phnom Penh and it's a a day or two late from when your other visa expired they will stamp it but when you get it back you'll have to pay a ten dollar a day overstay fee because it didn't get stamped in time so if your visa expires you do have to pay a ten dollar a day fee until you get it corrected for every day that it's a uh, overextended so you want to be sure you give yourself plenty of time for your visa to get mailed to Phnom Penh, get stamped, and then of course it will come back to you. And again, as long as it's stamped before your visa expires, it doesn't matter what day it actually comes back. <clears throat> but typically I would give, I would give yourself a week, give yourself at least seven days before your visa expires to go into a travel agency and tell them the type of visa extension you want, what you want to do. And they'll give you the receipt, they'll take your passport, and then they'll call you when it's, when it's done, of course. But during major holidays, like, uh, you know, the Khmer New Year and Chum Ben, uh, all those government agencies will be closed for at least three business days. So if you're getting it renewed around one of those holidays, give yourself a few extra days maybe go 10 to 14 days even before your visa or extension is set to expire so that you can be sure you get a new one it gets stamped uh, it doesn't get there and then have to sit for three days while and then again if it goes over your expiration date you'll have to pay the ten dollar a day fee So just be sure to give yourself plenty of time to uh, get that done so that you don't have to uh, 
uh, deal with all that. Uh, and it's also, and I've said this before many times, but again, a lot of you might know, already know this, but new people, first time in a new country, first time in a new country, or maybe the first time in Cambodia, uh, they might not be aware. They might think, okay, he's asking, uh, this motorcycle rental is asking me for a passport. Uh, I guess that's the way it's done here, and then just hand it over. Of course, you don't want to do that. But never on your day to day adventures, uh, don't carry your physical passport with you. Again, uh, it might seem like a common sense thing, but uh, I mean, I carried mine for a while when I first got here because I didn't know. I always, I always thought like at any time uh, uh, an immigration police was going to come up and say, hey, we need to see your passport, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but no, that's never happened, ever, in my six and a half years here. Uh, but do take a picture of the front page of your passport and do take a picture of your visa page and keep that on your phone make uh, uh, copies of both of those uh, paper copies if you want to stick them in your wallet stick them in your backpack uh, uh, you know put them in your back pocket tie them to your uh, flip-flop or you know wherever you get around and uh, just be sure you have copies just in case you might need it for identification purposes. But like I said, except for like opening a bank account, running a motorbike, uh, getting your visa renewed or uh, things like that, there's really, there'll be no reason why you need uh, to show your physical passport to anybody and the paper copies and the copies on your phone will do uh, just fine all right so I hope that helps uh, if this is your first time just some things to keep in mind be sure to check out all my links down below uh, like I said I have links for uh, paypal and kofi.com help support the channel be one of our mo most amazing supporters and next month I got something special for you. Something that hasn't even been announced yet and won't be announced until next month. So you will be the very first ones to get it. <clears throat> get all the information first. And be sure to check out all the other channels I got down below. There are all great channels. I've added a few in the last uh, few weeks. All these great bloggers coming to us from... Uh, Cambodia and the Siem Reap so you definitely want to check them out as well they all have good good content good information and I think you'll enjoy them and if you like horror books be sure to check out my other channel horror reads uh, every every week I review like uh, the last three horror books I read to let you know what I thought about them hint I only put books on the channel that I love and would recommend to others. So if you see a book on my channel, yeah, you're not going to get any negative reviews from me. But all the books you can you find on there, if you're a horror fiction fan, uh, give yourself something new to read. Something you might not have heard of. I like a lot of indie books. And there are some very, very excellent ones out there. Yeah, so be sure to check that out. There's a link down below for that as well. All right, from Siem Reap, Cambodia, I will talk to you guys in the next one.